hey, we're being asked to integrate the absolute value of cosine x from 0 to pi. So I haven't done this problem in a while, so this should be fun. So solution. Well, I guess the first thing we have to do is get rid of this absolute value. So using the definition of absolute value, cosine x, or the absolute value of cosine x, is going to be equal to cosine x if cosine x is greater than or equal to 0, and minus cosine x if cosine x is less than 0. So let's think about the graph of cosine uh, where we are. We're going from 0 to pi. So cosine of 0 is 1, so we're here. And it goes down, 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 down. It crosses at pi over 2 because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And then it starts to come back up. And oh, that's a great picture. And that would be pi. This is pi. And down here, we're at negative 1. All right, looks like it's going to be greater than or equal to 0 from 0 to pi over 2. And then from pi over 2 to pi, it's going to be less than 0. So this is, this is pi over 2. It looks kind of small there. All right, so we can break this integral up. We are going to break this up. So let's see. Let's call it i, so I don't have to write it again. So i. So i is equal to, well, first we'll go from 0 to pi over 2. So 0 to pi over 2. And we discussed that from 0 to pi over 2, it's going to be positive or 0. So let's write that as just cosine x, right? Because that's what happens when it's positive or 0 dx, plus the definite integral from pi over 2 to pi. And we're, when we're over there, from pi over 2 to pi, in this area here, cosine x is less than 0 here. So then we use this piece, right, because cosine x is less than 0, so we get minus cosine x. That wasn't bad. Now just the grunt work. We actually have to integrate this. So let's try to be careful here. Um, so let's see. So when you integrate cosine, uh, if you ever forget what the integral of cosine is, just ask yourself, what is a function whose derivative is cosine? Well, sine. So this is sine x. And it's going to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. And this is be added to, well, here we'll just have negative sine x. And this will be evaluated from pi over 2 to pi. All right, let's be careful here. This is the part where I usually mess up. Um, so let's see. So first we plug in the pi over 2. So we end up with sine of pi over 2 minus the sine of 0 plus, I'm going to put the second piece in parentheses, negative sine pi. Again, we plug in the pi first minus negative sine pi over 2. Parentheses, parentheses. Oh yeah, another parentheses. Totally nuts. All right, if you forget what the sine of pi over 2 is, just draw a little picture and think about the unit circle. Remember on the unit circle, uh, the x-coordinate is cosine theta, and the y-coordinate is sine theta. So here's pi over 2, and so the sine of pi over 2 is 1, because that's the y-coordinate there on the unit circle, right? The y-coordinate is 1, y equals 1. The sine of 0, we're here. Here's the sine of 0. So the y-coordinate here is 0, so 1 minus 0 plus... Sine of pi, again, we're over here, so that's 0. So plus, I'll, I'll use the parentheses, negative 0, minus negative, and then the sine of pi over 2, well, we said that's 1. Parentheses, parentheses. So we end up with 1. This is 0. This is 0. Here we have two negative signs, so we get a positive sign. So 1 plus 1, wow, let's not mess up here because we're almost done. 1 plus 1 is 2, so the answer is 2. And that's it.